uh, I'm kind of curious about um, about the trust insights thing. I, it's some some cool stuff. It th talks about zero trust, and then it can help secure people's network. How do we do that? And I'm kind of curious. Uh, I'm scratching my head a little bit. Can you show me how trust insights identify hardware changes? Yeah. So what uh, what you're looking at on the screen here? This is Trust Insights dashboard, and what I'm going to cool. show you is how we actually identify hardware changes in our network. So you can see here, we've got a bunch of changes in the network. We've got some software changes, we've got some hardware changes, we've got some device status changes. So your question was, how do I identify hardware change? So I'm gonna focus in on a particular change here. We can see here, there's a hardware change that occurred in November here, so we'll just click down. I can see here my Edge Router 1, we've had a hardware change and, and I wanna know what that is. So let's go and have a look at that. Oh. So we can see on our dashboard, we can see the time before and after when the change occurred. And we can see in the hardware list that there's some changes that occurred. In this case, there's a pluggable optic change. And if you want to know what that is, you can just open up and have a look. We can scroll down and we can see there's an optic change that's occurred on this interface. And what's even better is I can actually see information about that change. So I can see oh, the wow. type of optic that was inserted. I can see the serial number and I can even see like the description from the vendor. Now, this is really useful. You can actually track serial numbers and part numbers across your network. If you take an optic and, and remove it from one device and put it in another, you can search for that in the system. And not only that, you can actually use that to detect when the, an optic has been replaced or potentially if an optic has been removed without a planned change. This is a really good way to understand what's changing your network, where things are being moved around, you can do this not only for optics, you can do it for line cards, you can do it for power supplies, just about anything that has some level of intelligence and reportability in the system. Cool. So that's that's and how Trust Insights detects hardware changes. That's really, really nice. You mentioned about software changes. So a lot of times I do a smooth and I do DDTS and PCERs. Can we use Trust Insights to confirm the software updates and how, how do we track in all the software against the KGVs, the longer values? I'm curious now, you, you, this is exciting stuff. Yeah, so the first thing we want to do is actually detect the change. So I'm going to go back to my dashboard and I'm just going to focus on a little bit of a bigger window to look at. So what I'm going to look at here is I can see there's a bunch of changes that have occurred in the last 90 days. And, and I'm really interested in this change here that occurred I can see there's been a bunch of software changes. So let me just have a look at that. I want a little bit more information around what's occurred in this change on this device. So if I click on the software changes, I can see here's my device. And again, I, I see that same consistent experience of like the point before and after the change occurred. I can see the time window that was detected. And if I want to drill down in the software changes, I can see all the different software files that make up the operating system on this device. And one of the things I'm looking for is what's actually changed? Is it, is it a particular file or something else? So in this particular case, we can actually see this, a software upgrade has occurred. So this ah. device was running iOS 7.1 7 7 7 7 7 1, and it's been upgraded to 7.7.2. So I know that a change has occurred and I know what type of change has occurred. Now this, that change detection, that can work on the entire operating system or it can work on a file-by-file -file basis. This is all great because we, ha we know we can verify the hardware and the software. What if I have something that I put in as a script to test things and I forgot it's there? It may be uh, uh, becoming a security concern. How do we track, track changes that doesn't have a KGV? Do you mind showing me that? Sure. So, yeah, we can, we can do that now. So if I go over to the device, I can look at the status of this device. I can see Trust Insights in this case. Now, if I look at the packages that are installed on this device, I can see that in this case, we, we, Cisco validates where there's a bundled package in the dependency. We can actually see that this file is legitimate. Now, if I actually open up this, this uh, package, Cisco actually publishes signatures for all of the files that it releases for network devices. In this case, we call this a known good value. And we can see the value that Cisco shipped when this file was compiled and, and pushed out uh, for our customers to use. Now, how do we know as a, as a customer that that file is legitimate? The way that we do that is that we want to know, is the file the same as it's stored in the file system? So the package install hash, this is the value of the file at rest on the device itself. But we also need to know, has the file been tampered with since boot time? And the important part here is how do we detect what the, ha the hash value of that file is 
in memory as well as that rest in the disk. In this three case, these are the three important values. We see the value that Cisco shipped the signature for the file when Cisco shipped it. We see the signature for the file when it's resting in the hard drive on the device. And lastly, we see the signature of the file or the process as, as it's running in memory. And this is a really critical piece. We can we know from these three pieces of information that this file is secure and it's authentic and it's operating correctly. And I'm kind of curious now, what, how, do, how does Trust Insights handle UFOs? That's part of our question. What's now. a UFO? What do, you, what do you mean by UFO, Randolph? I don't understand. <laughs> oh, sorry. I made up some new acronym. It's called an unidentified file object, like something that- Oh, right. That's, <laughs> that's not what I, that wasn't what I was thinking. I thought you were talking about something else, like little green men. All right. So, uh, we, I, I think your question is pointing to like, how to identify when there's files on my routers that shouldn't be there, or maybe they're, they, they've been put there after the operating system has been installed. And this is really critical. If you want to understand if someone's been tampering with your device or potentially you've got a security risk, you want to understand when there are files that potentially haven't come from Cisco and may be potentially impacting the security of your infrastructure. So the way that we would do that is we would actually want to find out more about what files are, are installed on the device that aren't known about or shouldn't be there. So if I was to go over here and click on my Edge Router 1, uh, what I want to understand is, if I look at my router, how do I know if there's any files that have been installed in the file system in the last 90 days that weren't original to the base installation? So I can do that by looking for these things called unknown files. I'm just going to click on that, and it's going to go to the search. And what I'm oh, seeing wow. here is there are, there are a bunch of files that have been installed on this system, which didn't come from Cisco. They've put, been put in there after the installation. So in this particular case, I can see there's a, there's a Python script, and that could be a pretty significant security risk. That, it could be triggering some sort of batch process, which may be impacting the security of my device. Now, I may have put that there myself, and if I did, I can actually I can take a note of that hash, and if I see that file on any other system, I can actually create my own known good values from that running hash, or I can set off an alarm and say, hey, I've got a, a script, but it shouldn't be there because it's not. It doesn't have the same hash as, as my other scripts. So, oh. it's using this method we're able to identify those unknown file, file objects, as you call them, those UFOs. In this case, we can see we've got a bunch of files that maybe I don't want to be there. And and if I wanted to, I can go and search for those either via hash or other other means and pinpoint which devices might be impacted in my infrastructure.